Good morning. It is Sunday, September 13th, and we welcome you here to worship with us at Dublin United Methodist Church. We also have parking lot church this morning at 11 o'clock, and uh, we've got a short video we want to show you to show you how that's going to come together. So uh, watch this now. excited to be getting back together for worship and we're going to start with parking lot worship. When you come to the church we have some specific things we want you to follow and this video is a real short way for you to understand that. When you come you can come and park in on Darst or on Locust or come in through the where the sign is for the church and as a matter of fact it looks like we have somebody coming in right now and you can see what you need to do. Hello Don. I am doing great. Do you have any prayer concerns, attendance information, an offering to I give do. us today? My prayer concerns are written out here. All right. I know the usual, praying for Virginia Tech and all those important things. And you got your name written down? I got the names, Don and Terry, and my girlfriend, Martina, Martina McBride's okay. in the car. Okay, all right. There you go. Here's some offering. Look for money. Good, thank now, where you. where do I go? You go right over there. See the usher over there? I do. You just follow him. What a good-looking man over there. Yeah, he is. You're seeing him in just a second. Come on in here. Come right in here. Here we go. Try not to run over them. Thank you. Right there. Thank you. You look really familiar. I'm fast. I'm very fast. Okay. So just tune in to 87.9 FM to catch what's going on in worship. Restrooms will be available, but really for only emergency use. Here's a quick review. Worship starts at 11 a.m. Wear a mask when interacting with others. Have a touchless interaction with others. Follow parking and exiting instructions from ushers. Restrooms are available for emergency use. Tune in to 87.9 FM. Please stay in your car. If you have an emergency, flash your lights and honk your horn an usher will be with you quickly. If you are concerned about the weather, check Facebook or the webpage by 10 a.m. And we can't wait to see you. You have a good day. See you later. We are glad you are worshiping here with us. And if you are at home or somewhere and you want to light a candle to uh, kind of set the mood for your worship space, do that now. And uh, we are here together. And we have been through this season where we have been kind of wandering around in the desert. And uh, we have wanted to do other things and we have wanted things to be different. But uh, we just know that we are better together and we are doing everything we can to stay together. And we've done this virtually. We are having parking lot church today. And we will have that for a few weeks and then hope to be together in this space very soon to be able to worship in person. But we are doing everything we can to keep you safe. And uh, we are better as we do things together. So uh, let us pray and prepare our hearts for worship. Father, we give thanks for this time and this season that even though it has not been what we would have chosen there have been opportunities for us to love each other to serve our neighbors help us to come together and take care of the people you would have us to serve let us continue to do ministry in this community let us worship with vibrance as we return and uh let us listen for your voice as you speak to us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Because I can't even walk, Lord, without you holding my hand. I turn and look for one with you.
but I can't even walk, Lord, without you holding my hand. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. The mountain is too high, and the valley too wide down on my knees that's where I learned to stand because I can't, can't even walk Lord, without you holding my hand I thought As a mighty big man, but I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. As we continue in worship today, we come to a time where you can give of your offering. You can do that online. You can text to give. You can mail in your gift. Uh, there's lots of ways to give here at the church, and we want to thank you again for your generosity. Uh, we, our church is able to continue to do really great ministries uh, from the, the, the bed, uh, the, the Sleep in Heavenly Peace program uh, to the Dublin Feeding Program, which has come to a conclusion now that school is back in. Uh, so many different ways. You have done an amazing job. So thank you very much. And as we continue uh, in worship, this act of discipleship of giving, we want to say thank you. And if there's ways that, um, that you want to designate your gift or give it to the general ministry of what happens in our building, um, just know that if you have questions about any of your giving, just contact us at the church office. We'll be glad to help you with that. But now Bob is going to share a prayer with us.
I was just a kid, seven or eight years old, and it was a hot summer's day, and I needed to cross the road, but I had no shoes on. I decided to cross the road without any shoes, and it was a bad, bad decision. My feet were on fire. I needed protection for my feet. Jesus offers us protection for our souls. All he asks from us is to believe. Believe in him and believe in the Father. In Jesus' name, we pray for more faith. Amen. We have some prayer concerns and celebrations and announcements we want you to make sure that you get because a lot is happening in our church right now. First of all, many of you know that Parking Lot Church has started September 13th, and we are so excited about that. Um, we know that many of you are ready to come back into the building, but we're taking it slow and easy as Pulaski County High School begins to go in person. They'll fully be in person on September 28th. So we're going to give a few weeks after that before we do in-person worship just to kind of watch our numbers, see how the county's doing. So we're looking at a projected in-house, in-person worship date of October 11th. So you can begin to think of that as a projected date to be in the building. But until then, every Sunday, we're going to be in the parking lot at 11 o'clock. When we go to in-person in the building, it's going to be 9.30 uh, and then also an 11 o'clock service, two services. And you'll need to register your attendance. We'll have more information about that when we get closer to that date. Um, a couple other things I want you to know about is that Saturday, September 26th, from 9 until 1, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., we'll have another Sleep in Heavenly Peace bed build. Again, we need to contact the church office. Um, we just don't want to have too many people show up and be, you know, social distancing. We want that to work out well. So if you'll contact the church office, love to have you. Thank you for the many donations. Um, $175 covers the bed, the bedding, everything. Our Pulaski Reads program is donating books to the children so they can be read um, to them. It's just a great ministry that's really been magnetic in a lot of ways. Here's a picture of some kids who recently received a bed. Um, this past week, I think we had seven beds come out of our supplies here. That's the reason we're looking forward to the 26th. I hope to build 20 beds on that day. So the need is there, and thank you for helping fill that need. Also, uh, September 17th, this coming Thursday, uh, those who are interested in our mission uh, partnership that we're developing with El Ayudante and El Salvador, 7 o'clock, we'll actually have an in-person prayer service where we'll be Facebook live with some individuals, staff, and so forth that are part of El Ayudante. You can also watch from home. You can go to the Facebook page for El Ayudante and watch and participate that way as well. But there'll be many, there'll be Folks will be here. Again, social distancing, masks required. We'll do a temperature check. Everything we do for worship on a Sunday morning. It's kind of a test run for us. So um, you're welcome to come to that on the 17th. Also, really want to say thanks to all the support for supporting our school heroes so that you know you have given gifts that every teacher at Dublin Elementary School will receive a $50 gift card that they can purchase supplies with of whatever they need. And we did that last year, doing it again this year. Thank you. That is like manna from heaven for those teachers. That's a big deal. The relationship we have with Dublin Elementary School is so special. Thank you for that. And if you still want to write notes or cards or whatever, contact the church office. If you're a teacher that you want to be included, being prayed for in some way, and regardless of what school you teach in, just let us know. Um, contact us in the church office or one of us as pastors. Also, we have the basketball blessing, basketball goal blessing on Saturday, September 19th. And it'll be like a brief kind of service, just a blessing for the basketball goals, the generosity of so many folks, and then a quick game of horse. Bring your own basketball so we don't have folks kind of touching things um, and sharing those objects. But it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to bring my A game, which means I won't win anyways. But I hope that you will come out and have a lot of fun with that. On September 20th, Sunday at 7 o'clock, Reverend Kim Goddard will be preaching at Paige's Meeting House. We're kind of putting this together for uh, our church to come to, any other churches that want to come to. Social distancing, masks are required. It will be a fairly short service, but hope that you can come out um, and be part of that as well. And if you're somebody, it's like, you know, I am going stir crazy in my house. I'm comfortable being around people outside. I love to have you here on Tuesdays or Thursdays at 10 o'clock. 
We have stretchers. They meet right outside the sanctuary, and I, I don't know, they have 15 people or so there, really wonderfully distanced, and Becky Mady does a great job putting that group together. So if you're looking a way to connect with folks, that is a way to do that. Also, we'll be starting the book study, and How to Be Anti-Racist, on October 4th. So if you've not got a book, you know, Kindle or a physical book, you need to go ahead and get that, read it, so we can begin to discuss that. And we're actually going to cover not all the chapters, we're going to cover four major concepts that come out of that book. So if you want to go ahead and begin reading that book, How to Be Anti-Racist, if you need help purchasing the book, we'll be glad to help purchase the book for you, or if you want to download it online, whatever, we can help guide you in that process. So that's a lot of our, our announcements that are going on. Some prayer concerns we want you to be aware of as we want to extend our love and care to the family and friends of Regina Fields. She passed away this week, and we know that so many folks have known um, just known the Fields family. I know Regina, Miss Brumsfield at Dublin Elementary School, her mom, and just, we just, our hearts ache for the family. We want to pray for them and s- support during this time. Also, continue to be in prayer for Bonna Beamer, as she could just, just can use the prayer and just bless her with prayer and encouragement on this journey for her as she tries to get better. Also, Jerry Blessing's brother, Louie, is not doing well. We're requesting prayer for him. Uh, Jackie Freeman, um, John Freeman's spouse, she had a, a pretty significant stroke early this week. Um, she's making progress, but I invite you to pray for her um, and her hospitalization. Also pray for Bruce Ferris. He is the father of Adam Ferris and uh, father-in-law of Laura Ferris. He's had a very difficult couple of days, inviting you to be in prayer for him. And then also Lamont Taylor, who's connected to our church in a variety of ways. I just want to bless and pray for Lamont on um, as well. So those are some of our prayer requests. If you're wanting to share a prayer request on Parking Lot Church, you just write it down and drop it in the bucket when you come by when an usher is here. Um, or you can email us, call us at the church, and we'll also lift up those prayer concerns as well. So if you'll join me in an attitude of prayer. God, we are the people who struggle with our journey. We want what was normal to return. But Lord, we understand that what was normal is what got us in this place that we're in now with COVID. So Lord, as we try to wander through this very strange wilderness, help us remember that the promised land is in front of us. That as we, as we develop resilience, as, as we develop strength and courage, God, we want to just call on your name when we get weary. Help us not be a people uh, in our community who knows anything else other than love and a power of unity. Strengthen us, Lord, as we look into our community and we see how there is still so much pain uh, around issues of social unrest, of uh, struggles with uh, people's finances and their jobs. God, we pray for each one of those situations. We pray for those who are grieving. We pray for those who are hurting. Lord, help us continue to be a church that has a heart for those who do not know who you are. Help us reach out to them, even with the restrictions and strangeness of what it means to know people at this time. God, we thank you for how you hear our prayers. We thank you for how you were gathered with us in our homes and at church with our prayer vigil last week. And and God, we thank you for how you're in our homes with us now and in the parking lot and in so many other places right now as we pray together. God, we just give you praise. And thanks. Amen. Morning, kids. It's Pastor Don. Today, during our service, we're talking about God doing new things in new times and new situations and how God builds things. And in our house, somebody went to the doctor and they got a list of things the doctor wants them to do and uh, some things they wanted to change and do new. So we're all going to give it a try here at the Sheila household, okay? But um, you know, we got some more old things we used to do. Like we got some chips here. Oh, chips are good. We love some chips, don't we? The chips didn't make this sheet here. It said to watch carbohydrates. We got a piece of Alicia's pound cake. Love me some pound cake. Very tasty. Oh yeah, we got baby Ruth bars that some people in our family seem to love. I don't, you know, I don't know. Some people eat them all the time, you know. But this sheet talks about eating healthy and, and eating things like. Carrots, vegetables. That's a new thing for me, you know, eating vegetables. And, you know, vegetables don't taste like baby Ruth bars, do they? No, they don't. 
And it says almonds. Things like nuts, almonds. Let's try almond here. Mmm. Well, that sure doesn't taste like a potato chip, does it? No, it doesn't. But it's alright. I even have things like spinach on here. Green vegetables and stuff like that. I don't, believe it or not, this is our second thing of spinach already. We had that giant one where we had to get a new one. We had a big giant. We got a little bit smaller one this time. I was alone. But when God's doing new things, there are things we can do to help. And we can take part. And we can try some of these new things. And I may not blend all these things on this list into what I do. But I can do a lot of these things. And that'll help me be better, be sharper, healthier, and ready to do. Like the things we do for God, when we're watching the worship service and we're praying together and we're taking communion and we're focusing our heart on God, that helps us be sharper and better for Him. So let's do some new things for God today, okay? All right, have a great day. Let's pray. Father, help us to be sharp for you. Help us to be willing to try some new things in new ways, and especially during this time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we jump into the sermon today, I first want to read to you a scripture passage from Exodus chapter 17, verses 11 and 13, and I'll flesh out the rest of the story in the message. But I want you to um, understand that what you hear here online will be the same thing that people are similar to, what people were experienced in parking lot church. So don't feel like you're missing out. If you feel more safe to be at home, we, you know, great, we want to support you in that. And that we want to keep our church kind of united, though we're in different places. So there'll be similar messages um, on, on, on our property as well as online. So Exodus chapter 17, verses 11 through 13. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites would be winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and, sat, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady until sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amicalite army with the sword. It's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Many of you know that my wife teaches French at the high school, and I'm so proud of my wife. And I'm so proud of all of these educators and administrators who are working in colleges and the school systems. I mean, your, your whole industry is kind of flipping around and is majorly disrupted. And you're trying to figure out how to fulfill your mission, and yet do it in a way that, that matches the current realities of our world. And this is a difficult thing. And uh, just a real quick side note. There's three things I hope you hear from me and that you hear from your community. One is that I am proud of you as a teacher, as an administrator, educator, and just thank you. I'm so proud of you. What you're doing in this, this unprecedented time is significant. Thank you. Uh, the second thing I want you to hear is that your community does deeply appreciate you. I know there's some uh, parents and guardians who don't really show appreciation very well, but that is not the majority. Uh, the significant majority of our community deeply appreciates you and thanks you for your work. And then lastly, the thing I want you to know and rem remember is that the things that made you a really good teacher before COVID are the same gifts, skills that are going to make you an excellent teacher during the season of COVID. So believe in yourself. Don't give up. One of the things my awesome wife did recently is that she did a digital questionnaire for some of her students, and she asked them a super simple question. She said, tell me something that you learned this summer. And she had some great responses, and I just wanted to share some with you. One, one thing is that they, a person said, I taught myself how to play the ukulele. Another, I learned how to stock and run the front end of Food City. That's impressive. I learned how to sew with a sewing machine. I made lots of scrunchies and masks, a hat and a skirt with an exclamation point. Another one said, I learned Japanese. Since it was my primary language, I wanted to learn. French is the third on my personal list. I also learned how to lie again. <laughs> Creative. I learned how to feed baby cows. Um, I learned that not everyone you call your friend wants the best for you. That makes me sad to hear that. I've learned that taking care of a baby is really tiring. <laughs> and this is probably my favorite. This is to make sure if you have a pool, the water is the right chemical mixture 
or it can cause a skin rash. <laughs> I didn't want to see the picture of that one. But the majority of the, of the answers that she got fell into these simple categories. They said, I learned how to manage my time better. I learned not to take, my, I learned not to take any time that I have for granted. I learned how to keep calm. I learned that life can be very short, and we have to enjoy every second of it. I learned to not take my privileges for granted. Are you impressed? I'm impressed. These high school students, answering the majority of them being around just the, the issues that you just heard, I'm so impressed. But I wonder, if I was to ask you the same question. What have you learned this summer? What would you say? Well, that's something I want to tell you. I learned two things this summer myself. One is the never underestimate children or youth for the resiliency. Uh, I'm so impressed with the kids and the youth in our community, young adults. I mean, they amazing folks. And the second thing I learned is something I want you to discover from the book of Exodus, chapter 17, that you just heard me read. So let me kind of give you the, the rundown of what's going on. It's Moses, as in, let my people go, Moses, the Moses who led the Hebrews out of Egyptian slavery. Moses and all those Hebrew people are moving from what was familiar, though it was slavery, into what they call the wilderness wanderings of 40 years, going to the promised land. And I feel like we have so much in common with this story. It's like we look over our shoulder at the past and we long for that, though there were many things we didn't like about it. We just kind of long for that normalcy to come back, but it's not. So we're in the middle of this space that we feel very kind of confused, frustrated, grumbling all the time, and yet overlook some of the things that we really should see as blessings. And in the middle of that, we're looking toward a land that we go to that we know will be a good place when we get there. But right now, uh, it just feels so very far away. In enters Moses. Now, Moses has all the people, and they've gone to a place in Hebrew, it's Rephidim, and it actually means resting place. So the, the Hebrew people are at a place that they're supposed to be able to rest, and there's this army, this Amicalites, the bad guys in this story. They all show up and want to fight the Hebrews, and they're like, wow, my goodness. Moses calls out to Joshua, Joshua, you're my lead man here. Can you get some folks together? And tomorrow we're going to battle the Amicalites. And I, as Moses, am going to hold the staff of God, the staff of God that turned you know, the, the, the river Nile into blood, that part of the Red Sea that could become a serpent or could become a stick, that you know, could do all these things. I'm going to hold up the staff of God over my head. When I hold it up, you will prevail over the Amicalites. Joshua says, check, I've got that. Tomorrow morning I'm on it. And then the next day happens. And Moses is there. And um, I want to pause in the story and talk about what's in his hands. What's in your hands? And a lot of us look at our hands. You might take a moment right now. Just kind of look at your hands. You look at your hands and, and you might think of all the bad things that your hands have done. Uh, things that you wish your hands wouldn't have been involved in. Uh, you know, wish you wouldn't have picked up the keys that night. Wish you wouldn't have closed the door that night. Wish you wouldn't have signed off on that thing that time. Wish your hands would not have been as forceful. Was it called for to be that forceful in that incident? So a lot of things we probably wish our hands wouldn't have done. But I want you to remember all the good things that your hands have done. Uh, remind yourself. Think of the many good things that your hands have done. Remember all the the times your your hands maybe open a book that helped change your life, give you new perspective, or something you've learned that's changed your life since then. Think of all the times your hands have offered tenderness and compassion for those in need, or have made kind of a food item and blessed someone with it at the time of need, or fixed something that was that was just everyone else had given up on, but you were able to fix it with your hands, or how you provided comfort or encouragement with your hands, or even when you've clapped your hands together, how you've you've helped lift applause for a job well done. Look at your hands. Remember the good things that your hands have done. See, what you have in your hands matters. What Moses had in his hands mattered because as he had it up and lifted up, the Amicalites were not able to overcome Joshua and the troops because Moses held it up. But Aaron and Hur, who were on both sides of Moses, saw that his hands came down, that it didn't look good for Joshua and the troops on the, on the, on the plains. So they needed to figure out a way to hold his hands up. So they went and they got a a big rock, and they brought it to Moses so he could sit on it. And notice what happened there. They didn't say, Moses, come over here and sit down. They said, no, we're going to bring the rock, the strength to you. 
And we're going to stand beside you and hold up your arms so that we can be victorious in this. Your hands. See, I think we relate to this story because our hands are tired like Moses. We're tired of being in this wilderness of COVID. We're tired. We just want rest. And yet we still have these attacks from Maybe it's work. Maybe your job has changed. Maybe you've lost your job. Maybe it's just it's killing your heart because you can't be with family and friends. You feel like you're being attacked from multiple sides. People don't understand you. You don't feel like you're, you're, you're able to do what you think you should do. And, and you're getting weary. What's in your hands? I want you to remember that we live in a post-resurrection world. That your hands, my hands, are the hands of Jesus. And it is the hands of Jesus. These are the preferred tools that God wants to use in this world to make the world better. Your hands can make a call. Your hands can write a note. Your hands can do countless, unimaginable, beautiful, good things in this world and yet be safe at the same time and touch deeply into the heart of someone who needs encouragement. Your hands can can do so much good right now. And your hands can undo so much bad right now. I want to close you with this. I want you to think through uh, this last part of the story of what was happening with Moses, with Aaron and her. Uh, when our arms get tired, I often like to try to think of myself in this story as Moses, like, you know, I was a leader. I really think I probably relate more to being some of the grumbling Hebrew folks who just like wanted things to go back to the way they were. But there are Moseses among us. Men and women who are on the front lines of work. Educators. Good neighbors. People that are doing good things with their hands. What I want you to do is define those kind of people. To find these Moseses in our story, in our community, in our church. And I want you to do what you can to lift them up. Don't make them come to the rock of rest and of strength, but take the rock to them. Let your hands do that good, purposeful, life-giving work. So what I want you to learn from this passage today, I want you to learn that we're better when we work together. And we don't try to be a leader by ourselves, but when we have people around us that we can trust and we can rely on, that when we recognize that maybe you're feeling good right now, but there's someone else who maybe needs your blessing. So I want you to try something with me. Look at your hands. Hold them out. Look, literally look at them. And speak to your hands. Yeah, you might be in your home by yourself. Or you might be with some people you know. It may feel corny, but just go with it for a moment. Look at your hands and say, Hands, do kindness today. Hands, do justice today. Hands, be humble today. Hands, do good today. Because these are the hands of Jesus. We have so much to celebrate. We're getting back together at church in the parking lot today. But our hands need not grow weary of doing good. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the gift of how our hands can be your hands, how we can do ministry that is safe and yet can touch deeply into the hearts of others. God, help us feel your love as we share your love and help us not be weary. We give you praise, Lord. In the name of your Son, we pray. Amen. I'm glad you're worshiping with us today and that you're taking Holy Communion in your home. If you haven't yet done this, I pray that you'll go get a, uh, some kind of sustenance, a bread or a cracker, uh, and some kind of drink. It could be wine, it could be grape juice, it could be orange Fanta, whatever it is that you've got handy. And you can celebrate Holy Communion with us. We've received permission from our bishop for us to do this. And uh, it's just a great way for us to stay connected as a church that we're not physically worshiping together. And as we gather these elements, I just remind you as we come together, it's so important as we approach 
and remember some that Christ specifically asked us to remember as we approach this time, this table, that it's important for us to confess our sins. So I invite you now to take a moment to confess our sins in your heart, or if you're by yourself and you want to confess them out loud, and then I'll close that time with a word of prayer. God, we know it doesn't matter what time or place we are, no matter where we're standing or sitting or driving, that you are with us. We offer these prayers to you, things that we know are wrong in our hearts, things that we have done that are wrong in your eyes. And we've been silent when we've sort of spoken up. When we've, when we've acted and done something that we know we shouldn't have. And when we've dismissed what someone else has said they'd experienced without honoring the dignity and the pain of that person. God, forgive us. Free us to be joyful and obedient as a church and as individuals in following you. In the name of your Son, we pray. Amen. So we take these elements that you've gathered now before you and I remind you what Jesus did with his disciples. Many of you know this story, but let me remind you again. Jesus, on his last night, we all call this, the, they celebrate what we call the Last Supper. And they're getting to the end of their meal, which is a Passover meal, and he takes elements that were common, and he does something very uncommon. He says, take this bread, this last bread that they would have passed around each other. He says, take, eat. This is my body given to you. Now the disciples were a little confused, but they did what they were told. And they took the bread, and they broke it, and they passed it around everybody, ate of it. Then he took the cup, this kind of last cup that would have passed around together, and he reimagines how to use it. He says, take and drink. This is my blood given for you. Take and drink all of this. All of you. And we now take and eat and drink and we remember. The disciples then were not yet understanding of what was about to happen. We do understand now. That was his last meal to be, to enjoy with his, his friends before he died and was resurrected. And we celebrate, we and remember, because Christ was resurrected. His resurrection, resurrection shows us that there is a power when we put our hearts in his hand. So as you receive this, I pray that you would take eat and remember that power, that love, that Holy Spirit that touches you and allow Christ into your heart to remove the sin and to give you joy. So let's take, eat, and remember together the body and blood of Christ given to you, given to me. May the Holy Spirit be upon your elements there and these elements here. Help us remember what Christ did for us. How we can be one body of Christ. There are many people. Help us eat and remember and live a life that shows others who we follow. Amen.